Hello everybody, welcome to this video and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're gonna interview Mr. Dennis from the Vera project. Uh, I have today with me, Mr. Dennis, welcome to this video and to my interview. Hello, Janice. It's a pleasure to be here and, and uh, get to know your community. So I saw your, uh, your website, your uh, project. It was really interesting. And, uh, and it's also uh, the next level of the NFT uh, uh, space. So I would like to uh, ask you some questions to know more about your project to, to present to my audience. And uh, I will start with a, a very simple question like, um, what is Vera? Sure. So Vera is quite simple to understand. We're one of the first decentralized protocol that allows NFT to do two things, rentals and mortgages. So just like how in the real world, you can borrow from a bank to house an asset, and then you want to rent it out to make a residual or passive income from it. Currently, you really can't do that with NFTs, right? You mm -hmm. got to pay for price and forget about lending it to other people. The moment it's sent out of your wallet, it may never come back, right? Yeah, so exactly. Vera solves all these problems. Exactly. So Vera solves all these problems. And it's very exciting because it allows all these new ways for projects to generate new revenue streams, new use cases user experiences, user I mean, it's a game. But I mean, this is so advanced because most of the people still doesn't, still doesn't understand what is NFT. So th then you say that you can even mortgage and lend your NFT and gain passive income. That's like beyond the imagination of most of the people. So how did you come up with this, this concept? Like, uh, how did you come up with this idea? How? Sure. Well, I mean, the concept of mortgages and rentals is not something I invented. It's been existing for hundreds, if not thousands of years. It's just, it's just if you own an asset, you can do things like that, right? Yeah. Uh, but what actually inspired us to think a lot deeper in how to DeFi to apply it actually came from our team's experience uh, working with a lot of clients in the NFT and blockchain space in the real world. So for the past, I guess you can say five, six years, uh, our team has worked um, uh, with several projects um, with large companies and enterprise and brand. So for instance, we built a blockchain for like the number four bank in the world, Northern Trust, to manage 60 trillion in assets. We built blockchain for Kodak for IP management. Uh, and more recently, we even built the first NFT for Hollywood. They wanted to take movie and sell it as NFT. Oh, really? With a lot of these, yep, that's right. So with a lot of these experiences, you know, working with a bank, which manages real estate amongst many mm -hmm. assets, and also our experience how a existing brand or Hollywood icon, for example, how they would sell a movie, we noticed that there's still a lot of inefficiencies of how this is done, right? So for example, if you're gonna create a, uh, if you, you're a brand and you're gonna create your own NFT, um, they're still relying on a lot of paperwork contracts for lawyers and licensing, because they don't know who to trust to partner with them to sell that NFT, right? Yeah. And we were thinking, how, how nice would it be if, let's just say, you know, I have an NFT, I'm Tom Cruise, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's a guy from Russia or Greek that says, hey, I want to help you market. I don't know who they are. I'm not going to KYC them. I don't even know how the laws work in their country. But yeah. if you put collateral, uh, you put down some collateral in my smart contract, I'll just give you my NFT. If you don't pay, uh, if you don't return it by a certain deadline, I just take your collateral. I get paid. It's cool, right? I don't really wow. care. But if you sell it, and for any amount, I'm really motivated to sell it more than what collateral you put down, that money is yours. So it allows business to be done between strangers without needing to worry so much about trust and paperwork. And that's amazing, right? Now, yeah. moving forward, like uh, we also are lead investors in Amoka Brands. They do a lot of gaming and metaverses, you know, like Axe for example, right? Like yeah. Yeah. there's a lot of, not everyone can afford those things, uh, those NFTs. And some people say, hey, I want to borrow some to play and I'm willing to show revenue you to the owner. But that's what created the scholarship program. But it's, it's completely manual and centralized. I heard stories of people getting scammed, promises not kept, right? That kind of thing. We just think that having these solutions will pretty much solve a lot of those problems and it'll be a game changer in the NFT space, let alone doing mortgages. Think metaverse mortgages, right? I won't get into that for now. So hopefully that gives you some insights onto our inspirations and motivations for building Vera. Wow. 
that's impressive. And the uh, first time I see, like, I heard uh, about the idea of like uh, lending and NFTs, etc. But I didn't really saw uh, until now a project about that. And uh, it impressed me to to see something like this in the space. And uh, like technically, it's uh, it's uh, something that uh, everybody can do it easy, or it requires it requires like something uh, uh, some knowledge to do that somebody you know or well. If, well, think about it, right? If you have a room or a house and you're not living in it for a couple of days, right now you just go on Airbnb and enter it and put your and boom, you rent it out. Yeah. And you're gonna wait for someone to rent it. We exper- we we anticipate that experience we can create is somewhat similar, right? I mean, you have a FT you're using as collecting dust in your wallet, you can list it on a marketplace, enter the terms you're willing to accept, how much per day, per hour, amount. A rental duration maximum list it boom and it can get rented out it should be simple like that um we allow this type of feature to be compatible with any third-party marketplace if they want to integrate us and we're working hard to make sure it's like no code or little code you know like so that they, they don't really have to do much or you know they can uh the they can also list it on our marketplace right so and question. The cool let, thing me, is, let, me, let me make this clear Everybody from any marketplace, from any kind of NFT, they can list it to this uh, to Vera marketplace their NFT and lend them. Uh, yes, uh, but you're not required to list it on our marketplace. You can have your own marketplace uh, and and list it there. In other words, it could even be white labeled per se. You know, it, it just depends what you want to do. So we don't need to be a marketplace. We're a protocol at a protocol level, mm-hmm. right? But behind the scenes, you know, let's say there's a thousand marketplaces out there that's integrated, built on top of Vera, and then mm-hmm. you rental in the marketplace or mortgages. What mm-hmm. ends up happening is uh, our network basically creates a liquidity pool of many entities. Do you see how that works? Because mm-hmm. all of these marketplaces, even though they're all separate marketplaces, they're all connected by Vera on our network. Does it make mm-hmm. sense? Yeah. And yeah, that yeah. allows us to us to do a lot of amazing things in the future right so oh. what vera is building is not just a peer-to-peer marketplace okay you list and i wait for a buyer to buy just like X list just like ebay right kind of like that or airbnb yeah. we're actually building one of the first peer to contract rental networks that has mortgage support as well and what that allows us to do is uh, amazing things that can have not even been uh, uh, thought of be an example you know what yield farming is right stake yeah. some coins make money and there's different uses of it well in our later in our roadmap we want to enable something called nft yield farming so imagine in the future you can stake an nft you don't even have to wait for someone to rent your nft you already start making interest yield on it 10 percent, 20 percent 30 why is that possible where's that money coming from well if we are already most of the people who have that question like how you give money just like you give money because they stake the nft well well, exactly so think about this right so pick a game right game understand any played in game right but even outside of the game because not everyone believes in games being long term so let's talk ticketing i was just in new york and there was a blockchain uh um you know event or nft event board apes you know the very expensive eat they're selling for one one million dollar an ape or something like that, or even more. They require you to own an ape to attend an ape on a yacht, on a fancy yacht party. So no, if no you don't way. have an ape, you have to show you own the ape, and then it's a ticket. Each you can then attend the black. You know, if you own this NFT, then you can attend the event. So wow. imagine you don't, you don't have one. Well, then I will rent one, right? Yeah, then I can go. But now you can start thinking new ideas. NFT can be used for ticketing, right? Wow. But my point is, there are different use cases of NFTs outside of just games. You can use I may do in the future for me when I'm going to do a, a conference with blockchain in the future. I will create my NFTs and I will <laughs> tell to my audience that if you want to attend, you should have my NFT. <laughs> well, well, absolutely. That's exactly. And the upcoming wow. event in Miami, which is Art Basel, right? And uh, uh, Decentral, uh, was it? Yeah, Decentral. That's exactly what we're testing out. Actually, uh, working event conference organizer where if you own this NFT, you can get in the VIP area just to show you own it. That's it. So th- we're actually doing this right now at wow. the end of the month at the upcoming conferences, which is very exciting. And I should also say 
um, in our one of the parties launch parties because we're launching our mainnet in uh, or, uh, the first week of uh, September or December rather. Um, we will be showcasing uh, like we're actually going to work four days to do exactly something like that. If you have four dates, you can get in a party or you know you can lend it to somebody. But going back, you are saying how do many if they take their NFT? Where does that money come from? Well. First, money has there has to be demand for the NFT, and I just explained a couple of use cases where there's clear demand, right? An event, mm -hmm. event of NFT, maybe a for a game. So if that existed, our V1 product allows people to rent it, just more P2P. But through that, we know which type of NFT has high demand, right? Mm -hmm. And imagine mm -hmm. we can even bundle the NFTs together. So. Let's say I want to play this game, but I don't want to pay for the NFT yet because I don't know if the game is, I like it. So yeah. imagine you can try the NFT. So you can actually, uh, we can allow multiple NFTs for owners to be in a pool, like a bundle, and people can pay rent or subscription fee on that pool. And basically they can pick and choose any NFT to try out two days, three days, seven days. And that's revenue generated on not just one, but a group of NFTs. Right? Yeah, instead of instead and, of buying, somebody can rent it and play in in, in different games that you want. Exactly, and and you can wow. have as many uh, customers you want, not just one NFT to one user like P 2 P. You can have one uh, one hundred users all pay five dollar to subscribe to this pool, and they can share that pool, right? And wow. it's a trial. So, and of course, the, whoever owns that can get T too as well. So that's the future variable create. So as long as we know, like, let's say this game is very popular. A lot of people want a trial product, then that NFT is what's going to get revenue. And if that pool is running low on NFT because there's too much demand, guess what? We can then say, hey, I'm going to pay yield. Anybody that has this NFT, stake it. We need it because we need to uh, keep growing this pool because there's too many people. Then you got yield farming, right? So this is not just theory. This is what's happening in the real world. This is what banks do for real estate right now. They bundle real estate together. Yeah. We're now one of the first projects that let this become possible for NFTs. And how is this now, uh, this whole project? I guess like in, in practice, it, it, it can work also easily. Like for the users, it's not complicated to participate, to do all these things. As I said before, it should be easy, right? Yeah, so the front end user experience, um, I mean, we're, we're coming up with a demo marketplace for our mainnet so people can experience what it can be like. We're mm -hmm. trying to make the experience as good as possible. Uh, they can they choose the blockchain network they want to see NFTs in. It's like Ethereum, Polygon, BSC, click on it, they connect their wallet, it could be MetaMask, mm -hmm. for example, and mm -hmm. then everything that they pay from there, uh, they pay to the rent from there, agree mm -hmm. to the rental contract term. Or you know they want to lend, let someone else. You can do it through there, or you know all of that's done. Just pretty straightforward. Yeah. Awesome. And how is this? I saw that you have also the uh, the coin on the market. How is now this connected with the coin, uh, with the token? Sorry, on the market. Well, I mean, we are a decentralized network that mm -hmm. allows people to lend their NFTs and people to pay rent to borrow the NFT. So clarify, mm -hmm. NFT is lended and borrowed, not the fungible crypto, okay, NFT. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, when you deal with mortgages, you have one side lending cryptos and, and they are the one that specified this crypto can only be used to pay for this type of NFT. Maybe it's by asset type or class or attribute or ecosystem, whatever it is, right? So this, this is a decentralized network, just like Aave, which you may know, you know, which is a lending platform for cryptos. Yeah. The purpose of a token for that type of network, a lending type network, so the app may be different, right? It's NFT, it's not fungible, it's for decentralized governance, right? So mm -hmm. governance is the biggest thing. And then of course, you have a lot of things where um, you need to be able to pay the lenders, you know, the people that are lending out their assets, uh, pay them the incentives, the interest, whatever they got to earn to motivate them. Our tokens you for that. There's also transaction fees to collect right? Um, rental transaction will take a fee. And one thing we're right now working and thinking of in the, in the design for later on next year, when we start launching more uh, iterated versions of mainnet is we're going to implement a burning program. So the more adoption of our the more transactions and more rentals, more mortgages being done, we will start burning our tokens. So the token mm -hmm. supply shrinks and then the 
folders network will the token price should theoretically go up should, should raise so all of these things right um but, it's but, an NFT, but also you have you, you have a max supply correct on the you have max supply on the token right. one and it's billion. one billion okay yes cool cool yeah. All right, you just told me, uh, answer me uh, part of my next question already, like for the uh, future plans that you have for uh, the Vera and you and your team. And uh, it's any other uh, details that you want to share for the future uh, projects that you want to add on your project? Sure. Well, NFTs right now has seen a lot of extent, mainly arts and games. And a lot of it is experimentation. It has created a lot of interest from people not in the cryptos outside of crypto pays to take a look. Mm -hmm. And I hope that this trend can continue even during a bear market. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, we need to have NFTs be used for real world brands and businesses and products, not just 2D pixel art, right? Mm -hmm. And the only way to get more and more people to kind of trust to use NFTs is we need to have a way to solve, uh, to have the uh, easy way to determine the pricing of NFTs. Because right now there's a big problem and that is the determination of floor price because NFTs can be manipulated, right? You could basically mint 10 NFTs, sell, buy nine of them with your own wallets and then say, yeah. hey, it's so popular. Well, is it? I don't know, right? Um, there can, it, that's possible, right? And there may be people in that, so in order for NFTs to be more adoptable, I think having a strong rental and lending marketplace, not just from us, but powered by our network can be from any third party marketplace that allows us to have more uh, of data point to be able to figure out what is the true value of NFT. Because if, people, if there's consistent people are paying rent, then you know this neighborhood is worth this much, right? That is just like real estate. So yeah, that yeah. allows us to have a, ability to determine the value of NFTs. And when value is very, very clear, then you will have a lot more business interest, right? From all ends, from the investment point of view, from the, the, the speculator point of view, both, right? It's not just speculation. Hoping I buy NFT, I want to go up in price, right? That kind of mm -hmm. thing. And more importantly, you want liquidity, right? So in order, NFTs need to be able to convert it into money yeah. easier, right? Yeah. Imagine if real estate had no mortgages. In order to buy a house, you just got to pay 100% cash. You're going to have a collapse of the real estate market, right? Yeah. So NFTs right now is kind of like that. It's a really big blocker. There's a lot of these other projects like uh, Nifty or Pon Ponify or whatever. These projects are trying to let you use the NFT and use it as collateral. So, oh, I own a punk. I want to borrow $100,000 off my punk. But I'm not too bullish on this type of use case because we don't know the true value of the punk. You know, because mm -hmm. there's it's not enough transactions to do it. I think how we fit in this whole NFT space is by really making rentals and mortgages work, we allow price discovery and mm -hmm. more liquidity that can even help a lot of these other projects that are trying to do uh, 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 loans and, and using NFTs girl. And I think that's exciting for the future. Mm -hmm. But how, how you uh, uh, find the, the price of the, how you evaluate the price of NFT in the marketplace, that how you know that is $1,000, let's say, that NFT. It is not up, it's up to the market to determine, right? But if you allow the six asset to rental, not just wait for a buyer to buy it, then it creates extra opportunity for revenue generation, right? Mm -hmm. Because some of these may not be able to sold due to liquidity problems, or right? But if you allow them to be rented, then that creates some people that might increase the opportunity for it to be transacted, where just buying and selling oh. is very slow to find a buyer, right? Yeah. And if you have more transaction with the asset, then you can actually have more data points to know the value of it, right? Oh, That's what wow. I mean. it's and like, it's based on an algorithm and that. The 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 mind the, right. The, the price, it's right. like it's like a house. There's no one buying and selling the house, but someone wants to rent it or Airbnb yeah. it. And if you have a lot of houses in the same neighborhood or the same type of houses being rented, they're not sold but they're rented. Then you can yeah. at least know the health or what the what the value at root is in an area. It's the same idea. So mm -hmm. then we can start having a lot of interesting things about which area is the most active for utility and pricing. There's a lot of things we can do in the future. So a lot of that data is enabled by Vera where it's not possible mm -hmm. now. But Perfect. lastly, I would say um, in that 
it's very important in order for adoption to happen that you have everyday people, not just smart people, not crypto people, be able to relate to this new technology. And yeah. I think if you allow rental and mortgages to happen, rentals allow so many new use cases like eats and ticketing, right? Not just gaming, but like yeah. a celebrity now can create an NFT and that NFT can have use outside of just, oh, I want to collect the art, you know what I mean? And allows people everyday people, they may not even know anything about crypto to use and adopt NFTs. And then mortgages, on the other hand, allow people that cannot afford to purchase some of these NFTs to start affording it. And that creates even more adoption as well. Let alone, it allows people who want to really support the growth of specific ecosystems say, okay, I want to support Decentraland. Right. And uh, on all these lands, I want to continue having more people own land, Decentraland and build things on it, just like real estate development. Now they can put up money at an interest rate and say, hey, or you can borrow, I'm a bank now, borrow my money, go buy your land, go develop digital property on your land. I will fund it. So it allows anyone to become a bank to mm -hmm. promote innovation and development of the metaverse. And that is the power of these tools. Cool, man. I want to thank you for this interview. I will put the details of the Vera project and the social media and everything below this video for the community to check them out and the list the link from the token as well, so they can do the study as well. I want to thank you again for this interview and uh, to remind my uh, subscribers to check out the data below. Make sure you like and subscribe also to my channel for uh, more uh, daily content and uh, hope to see you again in the future sometime. My pleasure, Janice. You take care. Thank you so much for this time interview. I look forward to meeting in person in Europe in the near future as we continue events and expand there. Why Ciao not? now.